Hello everyone, Gilly here. Let's continue solving advent of code problems for 2018. This is day 19, part two. Now, part two was an absolute blast in day 19. This very much reminded me of day 23, part two of last year. So fortunately I had the benefit of having already solved that problem. So I kind of understood um, how, how I was going to go about solving this in a way that made sense. Um, basically, in part one, we executed a little program with instructions and this crazy rule that a certain register kind of tells us how jumps work in the program. In part two, we're told that a certain register, instead of starting at zero, will start at one. And let's just say, I think if you were to run this thing and let it execute to its fullness, um, I'm pretty sure it would take a lifetime or something crazy like that. So I'd recommend figuring out a different way to solve it. I'm going to show you how I solved it today. Um, this is the one problem. I, I know I said in the beginning of all these videos, you know, don't, don't cheat. Um, this is the one problem I'd recommend if you haven't solved it yourself, try it before watching this video because it is really, really, really fun. It is a very unique kind of problem. I've never solved one like it before, but maybe it's because I don't code in languages like this a lot or do things like this a lot. But anyways, I'm going to walk you through my thought process as I solved it. Again, this is very similar to day 23 of last year. So if you're curious to see another one, uh, last year was good, not bad. Um, my thoughts may have been better last year. They may be better this year. Not really sure. You can be the judge of that. So we're told basically that register zero will start with value one. Now, if we were to just go ahead and run this, and I'm gonna show you really quick that it does not execute timely. Um, if we were to go ahead and run this, it would take a lifetime, like I said. So we're gonna need a little bit of a different tactic to um, figure out how, to figure out the solution for this one. And basically the tactic I'm gonna use, and here's the first spoiler, is I'm going to um, change it from this assembly-like language to C. I'm going to translate this whole thing to C from assembly, I'm gonna port it over. Um, and doing so will be a fun and interesting exercise. And hopefully after porting it over, the actual problem under the problem will become a little more clear. So I'm just gonna convert it back to the part one, just so I can kind of test as I'm going that I haven't made any mistakes because there's a lot of room for error in this particular problem. So the first thing I'm gonna do is this R3, I'm gonna name it IP, which is again, an, uh, short for instruction pointer. And I'm just gonna do that so that I can kind of um, figure out uh, some special locations where it matters because it's a special register, it has special behaviors. All right, so that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark all of the places that are jumps. That's gonna help us to determine where our flow, where our data is flowing basically. So. IP is the, the first jump is right here. Um, and it's just going to say IP plus 16. So instruction pointer, it turns out is always going to be the case value because that's how you got there. Um, so that's kind of a nice thing. So we can actually just make this 16 and I'm just going to mark with comments, go to, and this would be 16, but remember we have to increment everything by one. So this is really a go to 17. So let's go ahead and go to 17 and see what 17 is all about. So at 17, we just do a couple of things. All right, um, since we had a go to on 17, I'm gonna mark this as a destination. Now, the reason I'm marking things as destinations is because it kind of tells me what I'm allowed to break up. Um, you can't, if you have something like this, you know that these things can be jumped to separately, um, assuming you don't have bad conditions or something like that. And if they can be jumped to separately, you can't really do a lot with them um, unless you can figure out a pattern. So I'm gonna mark 17 as a destination. And then I'm gonna move on to the next PI, oops, IP, the next instruction pointer. And let's actually go top to bottom. So there's the first one. So the second one is going to say R1 plus IP. So IP is gonna be five, just like it was before. It's gonna be the current value. And this is a relative jump. And the problem actually tells you that. But anyways, this is like a go-to. And when I say go-to in a number, I mean go to a line, basically. So here we need to do a little bit of reasoning. Um, to actually get to this line, we've got to either jump directly to it, which I'm going to assume you can't do yet until I've been proven wrong. I'm kind of going to keep assuming that until I've been proven wrong. Um, 
but basically if you look at the line above it, you have to go through this line to get there. This is doing an equality check. So R1, when we come into this part, must be a zero or a one. Meaning this is doing a go to five or six, which actually does a go to of six or seven. So hopefully you can start to see where some of the errors might come through here. Um, anyways, that's a go to, which means if that's a go to, this is a dest, and this is a dest potentially. All right, so where else do we change IP? Well, it turns out we change IP at the very next line. Um, and here we can just change this to seven because we have a plus one, and then that corresponds to a go to eight because again we have to increment everything as we're going Ooh. and as we're going we, something kind of nice is I can just keep running this and making sure the original example works now that's not a total guarantee that I have the right answer you know but um it's a good help so here we have another situation that's very familiar um, we have another go to because we're changing the instruction pointer and what are we changing well we're adding 10 to r1 and see again here we have r1 being a 0 or a 1 so this is going to be a 10 or an 11 or in reality it's going to be an 11 or a 12. so that means that 11 can be a destination 12 can be a destination all right um ip equals 2 that's just a go to 3 and let's also mark 3 as a destination do, 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 do. all right Nothing too crazy, let's keep going. So here we have another very familiar kind of situation. We have a go to, and IP is gonna go to R1, which again, is just a Boolean, plus IP, so that's gonna be 14. 14 plus one, so it'd be 14 or 15, or in reality, 15 or 16. So we have a destination here. And you're starting to notice some patterns, hopefully. Um, it's kind of nice. I kind of saw what was going on with this problem. It's so similar to 20, day 23 that I was able to kind of figure some things out. But um, anyways, we get to here. So our next IP is going to be this one right here. Here, this is an IP of one. So this is just a go to two. All right, nothing too crazy there. Here we have um, case 16 where IP is going to be 16 times 16. Now, I don't know off the top of my head what 16 times 16 is. I'm not very good at my uh, times tables, but um, I'm pretty sure that's whatever it is, it's greater than 35. So this actually here, this is not just a destination, but this is done. This will cause us to fall off the edge. So that's kind of cool to keep in mind. Um, so IP, have I missed any destinations? I don't think so, I think we're good so far. So here we have an IP which is a go to. And we are going to go from uh, IP's current location, which is 25, we'll fill that in while I'm here, to plus R0. Um, we don't really know what that is, honestly, at this point. There's no quick and easy, like here R0 is being set right above us. So that's interesting. Um, we'll just kind of leave that as a blank for now and start when we start solving it, it'll get flushed out. But basically, uh, the next line is a go to one. All right, so that's kind of nice. A go to one means we have a destination at one, potentially, likely. Okay, nothing too wild. So the next one and the final one is this last one right here. And this is a go to at one as well. All right, I think I already got something wrong. So let me see. I, I thought I remember there being an IP equals one somewhere. Oh, yeah, um, I mean IP equals two, IP equals 25, IP equals two, ah, here's one, go to three, hmm, IP equals one, here we go, go to two, there's a go to two here, but I noticed when we were at the top, I didn't mark two as a destination. Okay, so I think we have everything marked at this point, I could be wrong, but uh, let's kind of just go ahead and commence the problem. I kind of know where I'm going towards, so hopefully you'll get the idea if I make mistakes along the way, if I'll get clarified. Um, but basically we're told that in this particular problem, um, R, uh, what was the register? Um, two, 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 two. Register zero start with a value of one. 
So R0 is going to start with 1. And again, let's just go ahead and run the example input. Although I've only added comments. Nothing should break. Um, let's, add it. let's run this just to make sure it never terminates. Or not never terminates, but it doesn't terminate quickly. Okay. So if we have R0 equals 1, let's just walk through what this thing's going to be. Because we might start to kind of learn some things. So if we think about this program, it's going to start our instruction pointer at 0. So it's going to go here. Now, this part of the program is not a destination in any way, which means once we've hit it, because it's the first one, there's no way to ever get back to here. So actually what we can do is we can just pretend that our program starts at 16, but of course starting at 16 is a little silly because this really goes to 17. So that's interesting. So what happens if we go to 17? Well, if we go to 17, we see all of this kind of wild stuff going on. Um, and notice, 17 is a destination. Now, did I flag anywhere else as being able to take us to 17? No, I didn't. Nowhere else takes us to 17, just the place we just deleted, which pretty much means this is a destination, but it's only going to be hit in the beginning of the code. Or in other words, this is initialization logic. So once you figure that out, it makes it a lot easier to kind of figure out what's going on here. So basically what we can do is, since this is initialization logic, we can just start R4 at zero, and we can just kind of fill it out. So R4 is gonna be zero, so this is gonna be setting R4 to two, and this is gonna be multiplying two times two, and we have to keep some of this around, not everything, but we basically, if we can't reduce anything out, we've gotta keep the case statements around so that our example still works. Um, so of course that's just going to be 4, 2 times 2 is 4, um, nothing too crazy. So here we're going to have IP, which is 19, and here we're going to have times 4, not 44, that would be bad. Alright, here we're going to have 19 times 4 times 11, 19 times 4 times 11. Um, and we're just going to keep on modifying R4. All right, but now we get to some cases where we have an R1. So let's go ahead and figure out what that, how that plays into the mix. So R1 is going to be R1 plus 6. And if we look at R1, it starts at 0. So actually, because we're still in initialization code, that's, that's why it's nice to group destinations together because you know you can reduce the code on the inside so long as you keep things consistent. So notice we're keeping the case 17 here because we still start at 17. So R1 is going to be 6, then R1 is going to be 6 times 22, because this is the 22nd instruction. So we can delete that, we can reduce that down. So then we say R1 is going to equal R1 plus 21, so that's this right here. And I know parentheses aren't necessary here, but I like to add them anyways, because I'm picky. Um, so then in the end, we're told that R4 equals R4 plus um, R1. So that's going to be R4 plus R1. Yep, so far, so good. OK, and we can delete out. Oops. Plus R1, hmm, that was interesting. Plus R1, and we can delete out things like this. And that should actually still run. So let's run that and make sure we get the right answer. And we don't, I broke it already. So what did I do wrong? Um, we have R4 equals this. We can get rid of that, because we embedded R4 here. Then we have Six times twenty two plus twenty one plus nineteen times four times eleven. That all looks good. Oh, you know what? I think I um yeah, I need to oops. I need to get rid of this break here and then this goes right here. That's right. Let's run it now. Ooh, no good. What did I do wrong here? Um 
our instruction pointer is this plus r0. Oh, <laughs> oops. I have r0 as that, which is going to take forever. So there we go. We're still good. Awesome. Sorry about that. My bad. Um, but basically, uh, we know we're still in initialization logic, and this is going to do a jump, we said, but we didn't really know where. Um, it turns out, since we're in initialization logic and there's no other way to get here, it has to be just some constant, and it's going to be R0. So let's see, R0 is going to be, well, now we're getting out of the realm of our problem, but R0 in our example is going to be 1, and the actual answer we're looking for. So that's going to be 26, and that's going to take us to 27. So that's going to take us right here. So this is here when R0 starts as 1. Otherwise, we go here. So what that tells me is basically I think I think if R1, well, actually I know because I've solved the problem, but um, if R0 is 1, we have additional initialization logic to run. And that initialization logic is enough to make this problem take forever. So that's fun. All right, so if it's one, that's true, and we go here. There's no other way to get here, so we can actually just delete this for now. Um, but anyways, we're put here. Let's make sure this still runs. Oh no, it won't, because again, we changed the value upstairs. Um, so basically, we're at 27, and we're told that R1 is gonna equal 27. And we're kind of just doing more of the same here, honestly, there's nothing too, Nothing too crazy going on. Um, so R1, and look at how big this number gets. 27 times 28. And we just want to keep this label right here around. Delete this label. I'm trying to keep this safe. I kind of know the outcome, but you know, for your for your benefit, if, if you're curious about the actual solution. Um, So we're just going to keep on unro unrolling this thing, basically. All right, so next we have R1 equals IP, which is 30 times the old value of R1, which is this guy right here. Do, 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 do. All right, then we have R1 equals the old R1 times 14. Yeah, see how big this number is getting? It's just multiplying and multiplying multiply my goodness um, then we're gonna do times IP which is 32 all right then we're gonna do R4 equals R4 plus R1 okay so that's interesting so basically now we can kind of fuse these two ideas together and we can say R4 equals the old value of R4 which was this whole thing right here plus R1, and then R0 goes back to zero. So that's kind of nice because that allows us to do this extra initialization logic and kind of decide whether or not we want to consider um, all this extra stuff. Basically, it looks like, if you can read this, um, R4 is just getting a bunch of stuff tacked onto it here. If this extra initialization logic is true, R4 is growing huge. Um, so anyways, we do that there, we do that there, um, and then we have R0 equals 0, so if we just go back up here, R0 equals 0, okay, that's cool, we already set that back, and then we have a go to 1, and when we say go to 1, what do we actually mean? Well, we mean go back up here and do this, hmm, interesting, okay. So if we do that, what does that mean? Well, basically, there's no way back to here. We've shown that because um, we only have this done destination here, and there's no other destinations after it. So basically what we did was we just spent a long time figuring out this is our initialization value. And specifically, this will help us as we go, this first part is the part where the value is zero, and the second part is the value that gets tacked on when the value is one. So that's what we want there. Um, we're told that the instruction pointer here goes back to zero. So 
instruction pointer goes back to zero, but of course zero means one, go to one. All right, and then what else are we kind of dealing with here? Well, one thing you might kind of realize as you go through here, um, if you look at it really hard, uh, there's this R1 value that's being used everywhere. And this was this was an optimization I found pretty early on. I didn't I found it earlier than this point, um, just because I was looking I was looking specifically for it. But basically, if you look at R1, it's kind of like if you've ever declared a temp variable, it's just a temp variable. Like we're setting it to things and then comparing it. We're setting it to things and then comparing it. And it's always within the bounds of uh, one operation. It's always in the same destination block, if you will. Um, so that's something interesting to note, but basically what that means for us is that we don't actually care about its value here anymore. And we already have a value for our four, so we can kind of delete that out. And there we go. So that's really nice. We were able to reduce a lot of things out. Um, I think now, I might be mistaken about this. I might be in a bad state, but I think I can do this and run this and I get back a different number. Oh no, what did I do wrong? Oh, it's because IP starts it. No, it can't be that. Oh no. Let's see, I did something wrong, clearly. Um, maybe a value starts differently somewhere and I kind of messed it up. Destination, destination, R. Oh, maybe we did care about the value of R1. No, we don't, because we're just setting it everywhere. Hmm. Oh, you know what? Maybe we have a problem with termination now. Because we have all these cases, but we have things that are missing. So maybe, uh, I'm not sure what I did wrong. IP equals 16 times 16. We're probably just hitting this case. So, no, that doesn't make any sense, we're not. Let me just take a, oh yeah, plus 21. That 21 is part of, oh man, Whew, it's late. Sorry about this folks. That 21 is part of the number and that gives us back the correct answer. Awesome. So we have done some nice optimizations. Unfortunately, we have not done enough to make this whole thing actually work. So this is the only change that happens whenever that value um, changes to one, whenever our zero starts at one. So, what can we do here? Well, um, and remember, our zero got reset at the bottom of all this. If we go back to our input, you can see that. Yeah. Um, did it though? Oh yeah, right here. Our zero gets set to zero. So, now we can go ahead and do the more fun part of this problem. Uh, the less kind of tedious part, but basically um, I'm going to get rid of this switch in this case and we're going to fly off the rails basically. Um, we're going we're gonna to decompile this, this bad boy. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, to start I'm actually going to literally get rid of these things. And now we have lost all safety nets, so hopefully there won't be too many more mistakes. But basically, let's think about this. So the end goal is going to be to write C code out of this thing. Um, what constructs can we use to kind of represent these things as C code? Well, I'm gonna keep the case statements in actually because they kind of help us to determine what is the line number. Because we still have to deal with these jump concepts, but what do we have to do to actually uh, conclude here? Well, I already mentioned that you can kind of tell R1 is just a temp variable. So let's start by kind of getting rid of that. And actually, you know what? We can do that with the switch in, so I'm sorry, I'm gonna put it back just to have a little bit of a safety net. So if we look uh, here, R1 is this, and I found this was a, a place for you to be really careful with your, um, with your parentheses, because these Boolean operators are a little different than you might guess, um, at least if you're me. Uh, so I'm actually gonna just overwrap in Booleans and do this. All right, so I think that gets rid of one of our R1 instances, and yep, we're still good. So what about the next one? Well, the next R1 instance is this guy. And then we have, 
nine. Um, did I do that right? Yeah, I think that's good. Yep, that's good indeed. Um, do we have any more R1s? Yep, we have one right here. So let's unwrap that one. R1, and then this goes here, and then that goes there. Okay, nothing too crazy so far. So far, so good. I guess we can do a couple more things before we get rid of our while and switch. Sorry, I was jumping, jumping way far ahead there. Um, basically, if we have a destination, we can't split it apart from another destination because you can arbitrarily jump to the, these destinations, um, at least not yet. Um, here we have a whole bunch of values that are grouped together in the same destination. So that's kind of nice. We can um, kind of merge them if we want. Do we want to? R0 equals, well, let's see. Did, I think we got rid of R1. So let's actually just delete it from up here. Simplify our code a little bit. Good. So what do we want to do here? Do we really want to figure that out right now? Well, let's let's find our go-tos real quick. You know, I don't even see a go-to to seven anymore. I think we may have ruled that out as a true go-to. So um, I'm gonna say this isn't actually a dest, and I made a mistake. Um, could be wrong about that. Eight is a dest though. Yeah, because a couple lines above we're saying go to eight. A is a dust. I must have just mismarked it. No big deal. But um, let's see. I kind of want to reduce some things out, but I kind of don't at the same time. Uh, you know what? Let's not reduce things out right now. Let's go ahead and let's get rid of our loop and our switch and just totally get rid of all of our safety nets and go for the solution. Because that's the fun thing about advent of code, risk taking. Um, but anyways, we don't have a lot of code here. We can figure this out. So basically, uh, this is the done part. So if you think about this from a C perspective, this just means I've got here in the C code. I've gotten outside of a loop or whatever it took that was keeping me away from here. Um, so next we have this thing, which basically says our instruction pointer equals, wait one second, go to two. What is this all about? Case 15, instruction pointer equals one. What is that about? Go to two. Oh, okay. Cool. So this you can think of as being, well, this is our terminal condition because you can think of this as being um, 14, which is actually 15, plus zero or plus one. And the actual value depends on this being true or false. So if the value is true here, we are going to hop beyond 15 and be done. If the value is false here, we're gonna to hop to 15, which you can think of as being a loop. So I'm actually gonna encode it as a while, a do while loop specifically. And this is saying to hop to two. So let's see, am I correct about that? It's saying hop to two. Yeah. So we can say do, and let's just go ahead and indent everything inside of here. And as I said, if this is true, that means um, the condition's met. So we can actually say less than or equal to as our condition right there. And that kills that code, that kills that code. Um, and it makes this look like that. So that's kind of nice, um, nothing too wild. So next, just kind of looking around, um, we have a go to three here. Hmm. And you know what? It has a condition on it that looks a lot like the last one that we just kind of unraveled. So, you know, we can probably uh, stick another while. While. If only I could type it right here. And we can probably just do the same thing where we take this condition and we invert it. And we know that works because we have 10 here. And 10 will take us to 11 if it's false. It'll take us to 12, which is off the end, if it's true. So let's go ahead and make that look like code. And we were told that this goes to three. So that puts us right about here. And we can indent this. Okay, nothing too wild so far. 
Um, we can just go ahead and flat out unwrap some of this thing. Uh, that's fine. And you know what? We might as well just do that there. Uh, we can unwrap this as well. R2 equals one. And this is starting to look pretty nice. Uh, it's not done yet, but it's looking pretty nice. So if, so this is an interesting case right here. Um, basically we have this case where does R4 equal um, R5 times R2? If it does, we're gonna get a one on this. If it doesn't, we're going to get a zero. So if we get a zero, what does this say? Well, this says go to seven, which is really go to eight, or in other words, skip this. So you can kind of think of that as being like a not, um, but really the way I think of it as an if else, because when this condition is met, we're gonna hit this. When this condition is not met, or sorry, when this condition is met, Wait, sorry, I'm, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here. If this condition is met, we're gonna go here, which is gonna skip this condition. If this condition's not met, then we're gonna go here, which is gonna run the condition. So that's kind of nice, uh, pretty, pretty cool. Sorry, uh, this goes to eight, this skips the condition this runs the condition. Okay, so if, if this is met, then we're going to run the condition. Right, okay. So if, let's just type it out. It'll, that'll be easier than trying to think about it and just talk about it. So if the condition's met, then we're going to run the condition, which is this. And otherwise, we said that this would hop over the condition. So that puts us here on eight. And we already dealt with this, and we already dealt with that as our while loop. Oh man, this is really this is really getting simplified. This is nice. So we can do this if the condition's met. And if it's not met, we can do this. And I think we basically are there. So let's go ahead and let's run this really quick for the original input. Still get the correct number, that's nice. And then we still have to do more work because at this point we actually have just decompiled it to C. We've just taken the assembly and disassembled it into C, if that's even the right word, or assembled it, or whatever. Um, but basically, if you're looking at this, um, it's pretty clear and straightforward what it's doing, in my opinion. Um, it's got R2, and R2 is going to loop up to R4, while R2 is less than or equal to R4 uh, increment. It. So it's just looping up, and if at any point, oh, also, we have R5, which is looping up also to R4. And then if at any point R5 times R2 equals R4, so if, in other words, we found numbers that are divisors of R4 that multiplied together go into R4, we are going to add R5 to R0, which R0 is just like an accumulator now. It's just kind of counting up our results. So in my mind, we should be able to write this a little bit more simply by saying something, well, by basically getting rid of this inner loop and instead replacing it with the result we're looking for. So in other words, um, just looping over R5, we should be able to say if R4 is divisible by R5, and we can say divisible by doing modulo equals zero, then the result plus equals R5. And that actually kills this inner loop, which is kind of nice. And let's go ahead and run it, make sure we haven't made a mistake. Okay, so far so good. So now, moment of truth, if we run it for the bigger data, what happens? Well, we get back this extra big old number uh, pretty quickly. That was pretty fast, if I do say so myself. And that is the correct answer. Thank you for watching. I really enjoy this problem. Uh, and 23 of last year. These were great.